You are tuned into The Richard Brown Show on WCOM LP, Chapel Hill and Carborough. I am Richard Brown. I want to thank you so, so much for joining me today. It is very, very, uh, I'm very, very honored that you decided to spend some time with me and to experience uh, my wonderful guest today. Uh, let me take a second before we get into the show, talk a, a bit about what The Richard Brown Show is about. This is a place that I want to expand the experience and the understanding and the, uh, and the joys of the African American experience, African American population. Um, I have looked at different media, TV, radio, uh, both, and I have seen that many of the instances of uh, what you hear specifically about African Americans is negative, but in general, you know, stuff is very negative and so what I wish to do is I want to talk specifically about African Americans but it pertains to everybody to provide a positive message about African Americans about what is happening in the world everything is not doom and gloom I guess would be kind of the small nutshell about uh, about the show and so what you'll find is I'll be talking about uh, health I'll be talking about uh, life. I'll be talking about relationships and today what we'll be talking about is we will be talking about moving from uh, unemployment, having the skill set in order to find your job, to identify your dreams and to start chasing them. So again I want to thank you for tuning into the show today. I am very very appreciative. If you have questions you can go to my website richardbrownshow.com you can give me a call at 627-7299 that's the direct line for the for uh, for the Richard Brown Show. Um, I am just greatly greatly appreciative. So let me uh, introduce, well let me have my guests introduce the name of her organization as well as herself and we'll kind of get into the conversation about uh, number one locating a job but then I think uh, for me the bigger issue is uh, actually uh, chasing your dreams so thank you for coming on the show thank you for having us all right if you could please share your name and the name of the organization that you work with sure my name is Mrs. Rose M. Green I work for Durham Economic Resource Center which is located in Durham North Carolina Talk a little bit about the organization and kind of what it does and things like that. Sure. Durham Economic Resource Center was put together by um, In Poverty in Durham. This is an organization that had to find a way to see how we could end poverty in Durham. Durham is a like a two city, twin like a city of twins. Um, you got real, real rich, you got poor, poor, poor. So they had to find a way to see if we could help the po folks that are in poverty. Mm -hmm. So they searched around the United States and they came up with the program which is located in Greensboro, North Carolina under Reverend Odell Cleveland, which is the workforce, which is Welfare Reform Liaison Project. Okay. And it's been around now about 16 years. That's who we're modeled after. Now how long has the Durham component been around? We've been around exactly two years come November 18th. We're having our first or second year anniversary, which is going to be November 18th. Okay, so that's coming up in very soon. Very soon. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at the, Amer the American Tobacco uh, Campus. It's mm -hmm. going to be in Bay 7. Okay. Um, it's going to start about 6 o'clock in the evening to about 8. We're going to have silent auctions and just a great time. We wish lots of people to come down. Check out our website. You'll see how much it costs. Okay, all right. So you've been around for exactly two years. Now, walk me through what the organization or how the organization goes about the business of getting people who are unemployed and in poverty a job and out of pocket. Well, what we start off with, we have uh, a program that's about six months long. Okay, mm -hmm. and in that six months long program, we start you off in module one. Mm -hmm. Module one um, gives you basic skills. It's eight weeks long, anywhere from six to eight weeks long. We give you soft skills. We take you back to good old soft skills. I'm a graduate from there, and I thought I had good soft skills. I really thought I had good soft skills, but okay. I was unemployed at the so time. So, for example, what are the soft skills that, that you all might cover in the first module? In the first module, we start off with who moved my cheese. Okay, okay. That's, a, you know, that's the survival skill. What do I do when things are falling apart? How do I handle it? Do I just <laughs> panic? Do I run around like scary and just, mm -hmm. or do I just sit still and hope that it's going to change? Mm -hmm. So we learn from who moved my cheese, 
which character are we? And we hope that we all don't just sit around and wait for things to change. You have to get up and make some moves. The next thing we use, of course, is the seven habit of highly effective people. We teach a little bit about synergy. Then we do the great uh, dependent to, de dependent to, de interdependence. Oh, gotcha, right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have to depend on someone. So we teach that. So that's the beginning of your soft skills. We also mm -hmm. do um, basic typing skills. We do, uh, we have someone come in and actually do employability skills. And that's part of where I come in. I do a little class in there for employability skills on how, how do you find a job at a job fair? Mm -hmm. You know, job fairs sometimes feel like the meat market, you know? Yeah, you're, you're walking, walking around. around. Yeah, it's right. like, I'm in the meat market. Okay, so let's be the best piece of meat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That sounds so, a little rough, but I, I hear you. Got to be. I mean, I we had our job fair back in February, and we had 320 people come through. Mm -hmm. So our job fair did well. We had like 18 different, um, about 18 different companies came in to help mm -hmm. us out, and it was, you know, it, it was well. Uh, okay. Most of our students, out of those students that came, I think our class at that point was 12 or 14 of our students. I believe five of them at least found a job through that job fair, which is real important. That's very important. Talk, tell me a little bit about how you identify the people to go through the program. Is there like an online application where people can actually say, oh, I need a job. If I can make it through the six, six months of training, then you know I can at least be assured that I can go to the different job trainings. I can, um, you know, have this group of people who can help me to actually get, you know, um, you know, find a job. Well, we have what they call sponsorship. Okay. And what sponsorship is is we use a lot of the churches, okay, faith-based organizations, as well as uh, places like vocational rehab, Care Incorporated, mm -hmm. places that can help them with their case management. We've asked the churches to kind of step in and say, okay, I'm going to sponsor this person. Now, it sounds like a, it's a big job because sometimes they fall along the wayside and we're like, well, they didn't come to class this morning, mm -hmm. so we'll call their sponsor. Mm -hmm. Okay, why are they not attending the class? Gotcha. Um, we, you know, if they're not doing well in class, we'll call their sponsor and say, mm -hmm. uh, you might want to talk to them. Um, right. We do drug testing, so if, let's say they should fail the drug test. Mm -hmm. We just don't kick you to the curb. We send you to a you know, class where you can learn how to not use drugs. Mm -hmm. We may use okay. AA, we may use NA, it depends. So the sponsoring agency sends us the student. They're saying that this student needs help, mm -hmm. and you help them find a job. So you have been in existence for about two years, and you've had how many cohorts come through in that two years? Like, I, well, let me start this. How many people actually start the program? Wow. We did a count the other day. We had like 105 people actually start our program. Wow. Okay. Of that 105, I believe we have about almost 56 or 57 that actually completed the program. Okay, about half. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, and so I want to, as we go through this conversation, talk about, you know, what are some of the, I hesitate to use the word kind of like internal characteristics of the people who made it as opposed to the people who didn't make it. Um, because I think there are plenty of issues. There are external issues mm -hmm. as well as internal issues that kind of help you know, as you said, help people to make it through the pro program or, or what helps people um, to, to fall by the wayside, as you just mentioned. But I want to, um, before we get specifically into that, I want to take a second and talk about um, how the program walks you through from the first class all the way to graduation and sitting in, sitting in front of someone interviewing and getting ready to say, yeah, I, I accept this job. Okay. Mm -hmm. From day one, uh, after you're sponsored in, you go in and you have your orientation, okay, and we sit down, you sit down with Ms. Brown and you also sit down with Fred Stumpelkamp. Fred Stumpelkamp is our training coordinator, okay? okay? He also runs, he's our supervisor of the distribution center. Jackie Brown is the CEO of the company, so she actually comes in and sits down with you on a one-on-one -on -one and kind of evaluate where you're coming from, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Or where you've been and where you want to go, okay? So what she does is we have an assessment tool that we use and we have to make a decision on who can come 